Hey everybody, welcome to another installment of our header and footer builder video series where we're taking just a moment to discuss partials in the builders and today we're going to chat about the text partial which powers our text element as well as our headline element. Now the primary difference between these two elements is that the headline element is intended for a single line of text. So you could include um, like a strong tag or an M tag or something like that inline HTML elements, but you won't be nesting any block level elements in here like paragraphs or lists or things of that matter. And that is because with the headline element, you actually specify the wrapping tag that you want to use for that content, whether it's a paragraph um, or a heading or a generic div or a span tag. With the text element, that is where if you have long form copy, so you've got multiple paragraphs, maybe a list or two, that's where you'll want to put that type of content. And that's because all of that content is just wrapped in a div and it can handle block level elements for you to style. So just be aware of that as you're playing around with these, that um, those are the intended uses. Also with the headline element, it's kind of meant to be styled a little more, um, with a little more detail. For example, you've got this text overflow option, which provides this little ellipses here if your content is getting too long for the bar that it's in. And um, that might be useful because down the road, we're planning on giving you guys some of these dynamic, they're not quite short codes, but it'll be some syntax that you can use in the builder to pull through bits of content that is uh, contextual to the page you're on. So for example, imagine this was a, a blog you had built out and you're scrolling down the page. Well, you could build out a bar that does just this, that has a delayed reveal. And then you could put in a, a headline element and it could dynamically pull through the maybe the category of the post you're on and also the title of the post you're on. So imagine you know, you've got a post that maybe has a super long title, but you don't wanna have to, um, and you, you never quite know the length of what that might be. You may want to turn on that uh, text overflow option so that you get a little bit of wiggle room for the styling on certain screen sizes. And then eventually, you know, you could experiment with hiding it, having a different mobile style. Um, so that'll be useful, especially down the road, but sometimes it's just a look that people like to in certain situations. Um, and also to make sure that that works, you will wanna make sure that on your bar, you always have at least a width set. So if you have this set to auto, you know, visually nothing is really different up here. But if I have it on 100%, I can actually achieve that effect. Changing this to auto will essentially just keep my text running. And that has to do with just how Flexbox works. Remember, we've talked about how we need to be really kind of explicit with how we want Flexbox to function on our page that we're working on. Um, and, a, and a very subtle little thing too, that's just a, this is a personal CSS quirk that I've always, it's always bothered me with styling things. But if you were to add a significant amount of letter spacing to this, well, I'll just show you right here. So to this headline, let's make it like, eh, it's too big. So 0 0.5 M's. Now let me add a background to this. And I'll make that a little more. This, uh, this isn't winning any style awards, but don't worry. So when you add letter spacing to a piece of text, it's technically only supposed to be applied between letters. I'm pretty sure that's actually what the literal CSS spec says, but most brow all browsers, as far as I know, actually add that spacing to the last letter here. And so what you end up getting, if you were to style a headline, you know, with a background and just make it a really styled element is you get this kind of, you know, unsightly gap to the side here that looks just a little off. So also with the headline element, since we kind of know it's intended for one line of text, we can uh, we have a little CSS magic we're working to ensure that that little gap is not there in case you do have a big um, letter spacing set. So that's just, again, a very subtle thing, but I knew when I was building that element, I was gonna get it in there somehow. Um, the text element does not do that, and that's because of just how it's handling block level elements and the styling of that. 
So regarding styling, when you are styling the headline element and you're using the text formatting options, you're obviously just using it for that line of text. As for the text element, anything you adjust in here, all of your content will inherit that styling. So what you're kind of getting is, you know, the ability to style everything within here. The, the only thing you can't style are things like the margin between elements because that is inherited from the theme itself. So you'll notice that there's no margin outside the box here because you can actually specify that here if you wanted. But the margin between elements will always be inherited from the theme, but you can certainly style the, uh, you know, the coloring, the text transform, you know, font sizes, font weights, families, all of that stuff. Um, moving on to just additional styling options, you obviously have you know, margin for spacing. We can add a little padding if we want, or a lot of padding if we want. Um, borders, border radius, um, the standard fare you're probably used to seeing across so many of these elements now when you're playing around with them. Um, and again, keep in mind that for the text element, what you are essentially styling, let me add a little padding and a border. So again, you're styling the, the div with these elements that surrounds all of that text. So just be aware of those nuances and the differences there um, and what you can do with that. But, but it is gonna be really cool down the road when we have that dynamic ability to pull through content from the database, because what that'll mean is you could design one header um, and use it in multiple spots to pull through information. So imagine, kind of like here, we talked about pulling through the, the post title and maybe the blog uh, or the post category. Imagine too, if you had a, a, a shop, a WooCommerce powered shop, and perhaps this is your global navigation up here, um, on a product page, you could set up a second bar that maybe shows off a featured image for that product. And then your third bar could be set up like this. It could be sticky, just like this example. And you could have a headline element pulling through the name of that product. It could be pulling through um, WooCommerce pricing data. So it could be you know, the, uh, the price or the sale price of that product. And then you could have you know, a buy button that could be populated dynamically as well. So once that's in, it's gonna open up this whole new door of building really amazing headers that are geared towards different sections of your site. And we are um, really excited to get that in down the road. Um, but that's just a little taste of what is to come and a little uh, example of what you can accomplish with the text partial. Thanks guys.